Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to solve the sixth problem statement using Java. So the problem statement is we are going to solve the knapsack problem using Java, which has two, um, two methods or you can say two exceptions that we have been raised. That is, we have to solve the zero one knapsack problem using dynamic programming method and the greedy method. Now, before we dive into the source code and try to trace it line by line, I have few things that I want to tell you guys. So first thing, first point is that <clears throat> before you try to understand the source code or you try to trace it and before you get mugged up and you get confused, I would like to say that before doing that and checking the output, please make sure that you understand what is dynamic programming and even greedy method. So why I'm saying this is because in this case, in the 01 knapsack problem that we are solving today, or you can say that we are tracing today, basically I've already solved it. And one more thing, I have already uploaded the source code in the GitHub repository. So if you don't know that, I have put the link in the description below. Go and check it out. And I have, as always, I have done it for the previous problem statements as well. So coming back to the point, the reason why it is necessary is because <clears throat> this problem is a bit different is uh, there are n number of ways that how you can solve the zero one knapsack problem and in this problem statement we have been told that you have to do it okay you have to do it using dynamic programming method and you have to use it do it using greedy method only so you can just you cannot do it the way whatever you want so we have a particular fashion of how those things work here now with that said, coming back to the second point, let's try to understand what is 01 knapsack problem. Consider we have a particular bag and we have particular items. Now each item will be having a, what you can say, having a particular weight and it will be having a particular value or you can say profit. Now for example, the coffee cup, so this has a particular weight and as you can see, I have a pen here. So if you consider this as an object or you can say item, it has a particular weight. So when we say that, let's imagine they have particular profits as well. So when you steal it, you are going to have a particular profit when you resell them. So you have, when you have set of these items, you have to put it in the knapsack that we have of a particular capacity, say 15 kilograms. You have to put these particular items in the knapsack in a such a way that we have less weight and maximum profit you can have the equal amount of weight so it should not these item weight should not exceed the knapsack weight so that is one condition and we have to get the maximum profit and we have to do it using dynamic method and greedy method <clears throat> so i hope that's very clear coming back to the second point our third point I'm really messed up because maybe I have lost the practice of making videos. Shit. Okay. Anyways, coming back to the point. Third point is before we dive into understanding the source code, I know I have repeated this sentence, but please adjust. Anyways, so before we dive into the source code, let me try to make you understand the general plan of the file, how it's been organized, the classes the import, the import structures and the methods that I have written. So as you can see, I have opened up the source code in front of me and we have two classes and one import statement. And that particular import statement is very simple. It is used to, we have imported that statement to scan inputs from the user. You can do it by using files, but in this case, we are going to do it from the user. We have two classes. One is source and another is knapsack. Now you might have guessed what I have written the knapsack. So if you open up, basically knapsack class is responsible for solving the knapsack problem using two different methods that is dynamic and greedy. Now to do that, to solve the knapsack problem using dynamic method, we have a particular method called dynamic. So as you can see, I have highlighted it on the screen. And to solve it using the greedy method, I have written a greedy method named greedy. Now you can see I have written a private function called get highest ratio. So if you didn't understand why it exists, so it's basically not used by outside the class that is inside the main function. 
So it's basically used by the greedy method and not even the dynamic method. What it does, how it works, we will try to understand it when we try to get into the source code. So until now, just ignore it. So I'm just trying to make sure you guys understand the basic structure of how things are going here. So we have knapsack class, three methods. Done. Cool. And inside the source class, we have only one method. And inside the main method, what we are doing is we are scanning different types of inputs and we have different types of objects, variables, arrays declared here. And what we are going to do with those objects, variables and arrays is that we are going to scan the inputs and we are going to call the, uh, what you can say, the dynamic method and the greedy method to solve the problem. Now the inputs that we are scanning is number of elements, the weight for each element, the profit or the value the for, for each element and the total capacity, maximum capacity of the knapsack. And once we scan all these elements, what we are doing is we are invoking the dynamic and greedy method. So basically, once you invoke the dynamic and greedy method as well, this will automatically solve and even display the results. So we don't need to write a display function for that. So it saves a lot of us, a lot of time for us. Uh, I'm really messed up. Shit. Anyways, <clears throat> coming back to the last point. Now, before we understand the logic inside the knapsack class and their particular methods, I want to show you the output so that you can understand what are we expecting here. So it gives us some more clarity. So here's the output. I have, I'm in the right appropriate directory. Let's call in the compiler java source java. So it's asking me how many number of elements do you want to enter? So let's just give it four. And once we enter four, now we have to enter weights for four different elements. Now why four elements? Because we have entered number of elements as four. Quite simple. Boop. First, let's give two, one, three, two. Boop. Now for these particular four elements, we have added weights. Now we have to add the profits as well, or you can say the values. I call it values, you can call it profits, blah, blah, blah. After this, we would give profits. Let's give 10. 15, 12, 20. Now, the last input that it's going to ask is the what is the total maximum capacity of the knapsack? So let's just give five. Boop. So here we have two different solutions. I hope it's visible. Okay. First, it's calling the dynamic using, uh, it is solving the dynamic method using the dynamic method. First, it is showing the total profit and it is showing the total uh, different items that have been selected. So if you can see, we have selected first, second and fourth. So if we just add them up 20 plus 10 plus 15, that equals to 45. So that gives us the maximum profit and it does not even exceed the weight. One, two, four. Okay, so that gives us two plus two. Yes. Right. So <laughs> coming to the greedy method. Now greedy method has a different kind of logic. It's not that easy to, to get calculate here because we calculate the different ratios. So I'll tell that in a minute. So that's how it works. Now let's try to understand the source code. Ooh, the most interesting and even at the same time, the trickiest part. So let's start with the source class. So that's where the initial execution begins. That is the main function. That's quite common. Now inside the main uh, main method, we have two objects that is of scanner class that is used to scan inputs and we have the knapsack class which will be using for to invoke the dynamic and greedy method to solve the knapsack problem. Now we have two arrays that is weights and values. Now weights array, excuse me, uh, maybe side effects of coffee, uh, don't know, anyways. So weights array is used, we are going to use it to store the element uh, weights, different types of weights and values that you can say even profits, we are going to store it inside the values array and number of elements that is quite simple as it states, it is used to hold the number of items in knapsack. So default we have kept it to three and knapsack weight that is the maximum capacity of the knapsack bag 
it is default set to 15. Initially, we are scanning, we are telling user, hey, enter number of elements and we are going to store it inside the number of elements array, uh, sorry, the variable only. And once he does that, what we are going to do is starting from the first index, please note the key point here that we are going to start from the first index and we are going to ignore the zeroth index so that it will later on help us while we are solving it using dynamic, most uh, especially using dynamic and even as well as greedy method also. And once he does enters number of elements, we are going to score until I reaches the number of elements, like for example, four, until it reaches more than four, we are going to scan the weights and same goes for the profits as well. And if he enter, for example, if he enters number of elements as four, we are going to scan the four weights and four profits. And after that, this is quite simple. That is maximum capacity of the knapsack, same integer. So, so if you guys can see, I just maybe apples, apple should improve Siri a lot because I'm just speaking it has invoked Siri. Maybe I'll just close, switch the Wi-Fi off. Okay. Now after this, I have, we are going to invoke the dynamic and the greedy method. So as I said before, we are not going to write the separate functions like display to display the results. So it has the built-in functionality inside within those particular methods to calculate the results, store them and even to display the results. That is total profit and the items that have been selected. Quite simple. So that is for the source class. Coming back to the knapsack class, the most trickiest part. So where do we start? So as given in the problem segment, let's start with the dynamic programming and yeah by the way when we invoke the dynamic method we are going to pass four different methods that I have described here first one is the weights and what it does it is a array constructing of uh, consisting of sorry consisting of object weights and values the second parameter it consists it's an array consisting of the profits Coming back to the third, it's the total maximum capacity of the knapsack bag and number of elements, quite simple, total number of elements that has been scanned, that is four, five, 15, whatever it. And here comes the main part that is public void dynamic. Inside it, we have two different arrays. Solution is a two dimensional array, please note it. And we are going to give it a maximum range of number of elements plus one and knapsack weights plus one. So as I said before, I highly recommend you guys before we dive into, before you dive into this code and try to understand it and get yourself into a confusion, please try to understand what is dynamic programming and greedy methods. So it will be very easy for you to understand what I'm saying. Now coming back to the next, in the solution array, you can see we have first used number of elements plus one and knapsack elements plus one. So now you, you might wonder why don't we interchange this or why don't we just, why are we using it in that way? So basically first at the first subscript, we are going to use it as rows, quite simple. That's how it works. In the row section, we are going to uh, assume it as the number of elements, like first element, second element, third element, and fourth element. And at the column values, that is at the top. So we, they are going to act as weights. So, so that is where we are going to use the second script subscript for, that is knapsack weight plus one. So as we are going to use it from the first index, so as I have mentioned it before, we are going to start from the first index. So we are going to increase it by one so that in, we can ignore this even in this particular array, the zeroth index. So when we create all right, so when we create like, for example, when you enter the array size as three, it starts from zero, one, two, three. So we are going to ignore <coughs> the, sorry, zero, when you enter three elements, it basically takes from zero, one, two. So that basically, when we ignore the zeroth index, that will only become two elements. So to, in that case, what we are going to do is we are going to increase it by the number of elements given that is number of elements plus one. So when it's three, we are going to do it for four because we are going to ignore the zeroth index. Quite simple. 
maybe I messed a bit. Apologies for that. <laughs> After this, here comes the main trickiest part. For 0-1 knapsack problem using dynamic programming method, we have a particular formula that's how we are going to do it. And before that, we have a particular set of cases that we are going to get, take care of. We have two loops because it's a 2D array. That's how we're going to do it. Now, as I said, the first subscript is used to, that is the rows, we are going to indicate it as number of elements. First element, second element, third element, fourth element. Now, initially taking consideration as four elements. So we have four different rows and knapsack weight as total as knapsack weight as five. So we have five different columns, four rows, five columns, quite simple. Initially, whenever I or J is zero, we are going to keep it zero. Now, why do we keep it? Now, if you consider our uh, top columns as weights, now when weight is zero and the object, zero object have been selected, what's the maximum profit we are going to get? So that will be zero. So first column and first row will always be, be always, will always be the zero. And coming to the second case, <coughs> as I have written in the uh, in the comment, if the current object's weight is greater than the uh, current column weight, like for example, weight of the current object is five, the weight of the current object is three, and the weight uh, of the current column is just one. Now that time, this particular case is going to get executed so what we are going to do it is we are going to just copy the previous rows value of the same column into the current row column value so that's how it works <clears throat> coming to the else part we have a particular formula here what we are going to do it is we are going to compare two values two particular values the first one is the previous row of the same column value and the previous row we are going to compare it diagonally or two indices uh, beside. So I would recommend you guys to trace this out at least once so you get a better idea of how things are working here. So if I have actually uh, just a second. So if you guys can see, I have a try to trace this particular program that I have written so that I can show it to you guys. I have done it a bit half. So whenever the last case that I am highlighting on the screen, whenever the last case is going to execute, we are going to compare two particular values and whichever one is maximum. I hope it's clear to see. All right. Whichever is one is the maximum. We are going to select that particular value. Now, <clears throat> this loop is going to execute until the I reaches the number of elements and push it one above. So we have less than or equal to so that even if it's equal, it's going to execute. So it has to reach above the number of elements. So if number of elements are four, we need to make I as five to get out of the loop. So after this, in the dynamic programming method at the last row and the last column we are going to have the result and we are going to display it here so that is why solution of number of elements that is the highest index and the knapsack weight that is the highest index that is 4 comma 5 that is where the our answer is and we know it for every particular solution we are going to for every particular problem we are going to have that particular solution in that particular index value only so that's how dynamic programming works and after this, initially in a selected array, where we are going to store which elements have been selected for this particular problem, initially we are going to set all the elements has, as indicating as no elements have been selected. After this, we are going to use the temporary variables, i to point for number of elements and j to point for the knapsack weight. Now, we have found the solution and we have stored it. Now, what dynamic programming method says, now we have to take sequence of decisions to get the optimal solution. Now to do that, we are going to use the backtracking method and we are going to start from the last index from the solution array and we are going to compare the values. And if a particular value is found at the last, say we have got eight, and if it's not there in the previous row value, entire row, then that particular item is selected, that is fourth item. If that particular 
value exists in the previous row that means we understood that that particular value has been inherited from the previous row that means the fourth object cannot be selected now to make it more visualistic and more concrete i want you guys to really trace it out so it gives you a better idea of how things work so that way we are going to go until fourth row third row second row first row and zero row as you know it will always be zero because we are not going to select any object so if you don't select any object the profit and the weight will always be zero so that's how it works and once we do that <coughs> particular index values of selected array will set to one and we are going to display it and after displaying it that's it at first we have displayed the total profit and we are displaying the item select so that's how the dynamic method works maybe i'm not maybe you have not got completely of how things work i want you guys to really trace it out and if you guys have any kind of doubts do let me in the, know in the comment section below i would love to help you guys coming back to the greedy part we in greedy part what we are basically doing is <coughs> here we have three different approaches the one which we have chosen is by calculating the ratio now how do we calculate the ratio for every element we have a weight yep agreed now what we are going to do it is we are going to calculate the ratio of profit divided by weight for every element and we are going to store it in a particular array called ratios now you can see we have a particular set of variables for here that is total profit that we are going to solve <coughs> store the total profit that we have gained from the problem and we have a temporary variables temporary variable which will be storing number of elements i will tell you why i am using that and coming uh, instead of using directly number of elements why i am using temp so i'll tell you that in a minute when we go into the file loop at 196 line note please do note that these all are double and not integers because it's a fractional knapsack problem because in greedy we cannot solve the zero one knapsack problem so we are going to divide the objects and we are going to take that particular amount of profit and after this <coughs> initially what we are doing is initially we are uh, saying the selected items as minus one for every ele element we are going to set minus one that indicates that we are not going to select any element so if it's minus one that means no element has been selected in the comments i have written please do take a note that if it's minus one it indicates as night item has not been selected and if it's minus two at particular index that means the item has been selected now as i said we are going to calculate the ratio at this particular index if say i is equal to one what we are going to do it is value of one divided by value weight of one now so consider 20 divided by 10 now for this for every item we are going to calculate the ratio and once we do that we are going to store it in the ratio set now after this what now until the number of elements are greater than zero what we are going to do it is we are going to iterate through all the elements we have a single while loop and as you know <coughs> we have calculated the ratio for every element what we are going to do it is we are going to call the our get highest ratio function here and what that particular function does is from that given array and temp now as i said before i will explain that in a minute so initially we are going to set it as temp to number of elements so as i am using the number of elements variable directly so when this particular loop runs once we are going to decrement it by one so next time when it runs if i send here number of elements variable directly so it will cause us an bug not actually an error but it will cause us a bug which will eventually not give us appropriate result so that is why we are going to use another variable so i have even mentioned it here in the comment temp variable holds the number of elements what it does is it calculates the highest ratio gets the highest ratio from the ratio array and it stores and one more thing it doesn't actually get the ratio but it gets the wherever that ratio is stored its index value for example if it's 
highest ratio is at second index we are going to get the index value that is 2 and that will be storing that will be stored inside the highest ratio index so next we have a two set of cases here like for example in greedy we know that we are going to solve it using the fractional lab side what we are going to do it is if first we have to check whether this whole item can be selected if it cannot if the whole item cannot be selected we are going to divide the item and we are going to take half or quarter of the item so initially we are checking whether the whole item can be selected so whole item can be selected if this condi particular condition true gets true at 2 not 3 line and what we are going to do it is we are going to first subtract the remaining weight with the current objects weight and add the current total profit with the current objects profit so that we can sum up and calculate the total profit at the end and <clears throat> for the correct current items index that we got from the get highest ratio we are going to indicate it as minus 2 now what does minus 2 indicates as i said before if it's minus 2 in the selected items that means that particular item has been selected now with that said what if we cannot select the whole item what if the remaining weight now what if the current object's weight is greater than the remaining weight for example the remaining weight is 2 kg and the current object's weight is 15 kg now what we are going to do in this case is we are going to divide the item now when you divide the item we are going to the weight of a partic that particular object the weight or you can say the profit of that particular item will also get divided so we are going to use a particular formula for that to get the total profit what we are going to do is first we are going to get the remaining weight divided by weight of the current item now we are going to divide it and we are going to multiply it with the current items profit so please take a note on that and do read the comments very carefully actually it's quite simple for so you just need to trace it once and you will get the complete idea of how things are going here and after this once the if whole if statement gets executed so <clears throat> what we are going to do it is we are going to set the current items index as minus one so why are we doing that so consider a case where we have got the current highest index as two so that we know that that at that particular index the ratio is high so now next time when we call the guest highest ratio index function it is going to select the same item so we don't want to do that because if you do that the same item will be get selected again and again we will want to select the different items as well so what we are going to do it is once we select the highest ratio once we are going to kill it and we are going to make it minus one so that next time it won't get selected and we are going to decrement the number of elements by one so if it's four elements three two one zero so if it's zero it comes out of the loop and after this we are going to display the total profit so as we did it in the dynamic programming here even we are displaying the total item selected and if its current index of the selected item is minus 2 that means the item has been selected and we are going to print it so that's basically how things work here so if you guys didn't understand do let me know in the comment section below and if you guys found any type of errors bugs do let me know and try to pull a request on github or else do message me or do dm me on instagram and or else you can even comment on the youtube comment section as well so now let's check the output one more time so that we have a complete idea for all right let's add the weights what we'll do we'll do two three one five 12, 10, 20, 15, uh, 7. So we are going to get two different outputs here that is dynamic and greedy. Actually, basically, it's one output only, but we have two different methods. So basically, that's what I call. <laughs> Even I don't know what I'm talking today right now. Anyways, so that is basically how what this how this works. So again, we got two different 
types of outputs here that is total profit 42 and for greedy methods its total profit is 45 and most of the cases is that i have observed is in greedy method in most of the times we are going to select more number of items and in some cases in that we are going to even get more number of profit for example in this case you can see we are getting 45 as profit for greedy method and for dynamic we are getting 42 now the reason why we get this is because in greedy method we are going to take the fraction that is for example if it's a fruit <coughs> we are going to divide that fruit and we are going to take the half fruit so that it the weight doesn't exceed the maximum capacity of the knapsack so that's a competitive advantage of greedy method here and but in dynamic method you can either select or not select for example consider this a pen so if you want to take this pen you cannot break this pen and take it because you can either take it or you have to leave it so that is basically how it works yep that's it so <clears throat> so i hope you guys understood anything at least so if you guys didn't even that let me know in the comment section below i hope you guys like this video if you guys liked it share it with your friends who need to watch this video so that they can understand things and share it with your friends do let me know what you guys think in the comment section below i will see you in the next video until then have a great one